Hello everyone, it's Paul Tilly and welcome back. Today, in this unit, I'd like to talk about annuities. Now when we think of the word annuity, we really need to get our head around what exactly this thing is. It's not a word that normally appears in, in language. Essentially, what an annuity is, it's a stream of payments. Those payments are made at regular intervals. So they're the same intervals, for example, monthly, yearly, weekly, and so on. And the other thing that is important about annuities is the amount of the payment is the same. So those are two integral parts of annuities. The payment amount is exactly the same, and interval is consistent. So we've got this sort of situation going on here. So let's say now we have a payment of, let's say, $100 there, and $100 there, and $100 there, and $100 there. So essentially, we see that the time period, this is called the interval, is the same in each case, and the amount paid, or the amount of money flowing is the same. So that's that's essentially what we're dealing here with. Now, so you say, well, what is it we want to do? Well, what we want to do with these things is figure out their worth. So we're trying to determine, let's say, for example, we had this stream of payments here. Let's Let's take a look at this. We've got one, two, three, four payments of $100. So you say, well, that's $400 you paid. Yeah, that's true. It is $400, but we have to consider the time value of money. So let's just take, for example, we want to look at it from the perspective of now. Think about it. What would you prefer? A stream of payments of $100 for four, let's say this is months, for four months, or would you like a single payment now? And if you thought about it, you'd probably say that you'd sell for a little less money now than $400 in order to get it all at once. And the reason is, is the time value of money, because as time goes by, that money that's out in the end of the payments is going to be worth less. And that's really determined by the percentage rate. And we're going to be given in these problems a percentage rate. So that's going to affect how much that $400 or that four payments of $100 is worth now. It's going to affect the time value of that money. The first consideration that I'd like you to look at is to think about how we can do this assessment. Let, let's look at the couple of scenarios that could occur. What we Let's say, for example, we're here now. This is now. And you want to be able to buy a new car at some point in the future. So you want to accumulate, let's say, $30,000 at some date in the future. That's, that's what you want to do so that you can buy that new car. Let's assume that's five years down the road, four years down the road, or so on. So uh, if we think about that stream of payments, if you were saving so much a month, for example, You'd, you'd want to be able to make a stream of payments, and again, keeping in mind now an annuity that they're always equidistant, and that the payments are made are the same amount, so the payments is, are the same amount. We might want to consider how much money we'd have to put in in order to, each month, in order to really accumulate the $30,000. So that's that's one aspect of this, and this is really looking at what we call the future value. We want to we want to be able to calculate the future value of a stream of payments as they're made, what they're going to be in so much time. So that's that's one particular aspect of this. The other particular aspect is let's assume that you are uh, looking at uh, something where you say okay um, you have a, a stream of payments again Let's assume this is the stream of payments, and they're going off into the future to a certain point in time. 
and you want to say to yourself, how much is that worth now? So that's, a, that's the reverse point of view, and this is what we call the present value calculation. So essentially, we can look in both directions. We can look forward and say, well, you know, um, we need them. We want to assume what a, a series of payments is going to add up to at some point in time in the future, how much it's going to be. Or we can look going this way and say, well, you know, if we had a series of payments, like for example, if you won the lottery and they're going to pay you $1,000 a month for 25 years, how much is that worth now? And, and what is the equivalent amount of money? If you were to accept an equivalent lump sum now, what would it be? So this is really what we consider the present value. So over the course of the, the next couple of sections, we're going to be looking at future value calculations and present value calculations. And it really depends on your perspective. Which way are you looking, forwards or backwards? As I've already mentioned with regards to annuities, there's a couple things that we're going to have to concern ourselves with regards to annuity calculations. The first thing is the payment amount. That is a uh, set amount. It's, it's always the same. And the terminology that we use for that is PMT. That, that's the payment. That's one thing. Now, the other thing is the number of payments. You have to ask, how many times are we going to do this? How many is in the series of payments? And there is some finite amount with regards to annuities. You know, 25 years, for example, or 20 payments, or 16 months, or so on, depending on how the annuity is set up. So N is going to be important. We're also interested in the interest rate, because the interest rate will give us an indication of how much the money is growing or shrinking, depending on which way we're going. So interest is going to be an important factor in the calculation. Just a couple more things, too, is, is we have to ask, um, uh, in this series of payments, so I'm just going to put in several intervals here. OK, here we have a series of intervals. Um, this is 1, 2, and 3, and 0. The question is, where does the payment come in? Does it come in at the end, or does it come in at the beginning. And that makes a difference to how we calculate it. For example, most payments occur at the end of the period. So for example, we'll make our first payment, period one, and so on. Some payments, however, are at the beginning of the period. So if we buy something, for example, we, we do an initial payment right away. So we have to consider which way, which, which factor comes into play in terms of where is the payment made, at the beginning of the period or at the end of the period. So that's another important consideration in the, in the calculation. In terms, of, um, in terms of the interest rate, too, one of the things we want to ask ourselves is the number of compounds. Okay? And we've looked at compounds before. For example, is it 12% quarterly. Is it a quarterly interest rate, for example? You know, do they, do they calculate interest quarterly? Because we have to ask ourselves, are the number of compounds matching up with the payment period? So for example, if this were a quarterly payment and we had quarterly compounds, yes, it would match up quarterly and quarterly. However, if this were monthly payments, and the compounds were quarterly, it wouldn't match up. And we have to do some, some extra work if they don't match up. So the compounding periods uh, match the, the uh, payment period. So that, that's an important consideration that we have to answer in order to know how we go about the first instance that I want to look at was something called the Ordinary Simple Annuity. And uh, what it does is that applies to a situation in which two factors are, are used. Okay, the first factor, in order for an Ordinary Simple to, Annuity to occur, 
what we have to do in order to use this formula essentially what we have to do is assess the problem we ask ourselves are the uh, payment intervals and the interest compounding periods the same. Uh, what I mean by that is if our, if our payment intervals are monthly and the compounding periods are monthly, then ordinary simple will work. If the payment intervals are monthly and the compounding is yearly, ordinary simple wouldn't work. So we need to be able to do that. We need to ask ourselves payment intervals, compare that with the compounding periods. That's the next thing that has to be uh, used has to be in place in order to use an ordinary simple annuity is the fact of the matter is is the payment must occur at the end of the period interval. So in other words, like let's say for example it's monthly, the payment occurs at the end of the month. So these are two two important factors. Now, okay, so what are we trying to do here? You know, what are we looking at? Well, we can look at it from two directions. Let's look at first from the, the calculation of what's called the future value. Let's assume, for example, that you have a a stream of dollars coming in, let's say a dollar, a dollar, a dollar, a dollar, and you want to ask how much will you have at the end of the series. So essentially what you're looking at is a future value And what you're doing is collecting the future value of all of these payments of a dollar, and you're evaluating at the end of the period. So you could imagine, like for example, if you're uh, working and you're you know paying into a pension. So as you work along, you're paying into a pension, X dollars, X dollars, X dollars, X dollars. Same amount of money that you're putting into your pension. When you turn 65, that's the the, the end date you retire, you want to know how much you're going to have in your pension. So this is where this future value type uh, situation comes along and that, that's where we use that. Now in order to do that we use a, a formula and the formula the formula is built on the future value formula that we learned in the last year. In fact you could calculate the future value of this one dollar from this point right here and you could calculate the future value of this one dollar from this point right here and right and here and here. So you could do four different calculations of future value, add up the totals, and you would get that amount there. So instead of doing four different equations in order to do this particular problem, what we'll use is this future value formula. So future value is PMT, the payment, which is the one dollar in our little example here, one plus I Okay, 1 plus i to the n minus 1 over i. Now this will give us, we can plug these, our payments in here. We'll know our interest rate. Now I haven't set an interest rate. Let's assume 10%. Okay, let's assume 10% per month or per year, or whatever it is. Uh, and we assume two words an ordinary simple that these, these criteria are met. We could plug it in there and get that future value. In other words, it would give us the value of this amount, of this amount. So let's just assume that we've got dollar payments here, one dollar payment. Okay, do this example, we'll carry it through. Let's assume it's 10%. Let's assume this is yearly again, 10% per year. And let's assume that the compounding periods sync up and the, the, uh, the payment intervals sync up. So everything's good. So in this case, we're going to calculate the future value, and the payment is 1, okay, 1 plus i, and we said the interest rate is 10%, 0 0.10, to the n, so we got 1, 2, 3, 4, let's assume we do that at the last, so let's assume 5 periods, okay, minus 1 over 0 0.10. 
Now, if we do that, if we do that. If we do that, we can do the math. We'll plug it into our calculator here. So that's 1.10 to the power of 5 equals minus 1 equals divided by 0 0.110 equals times 1. F V equals 6.1051. So what we're seeing here is if we've had five payments of a dollar, one, two, three, four, five, and let's assume this is a one year interval, earning 10% interest. At the end, the future value will be six dollars and eleven cents. Six dollars and eleven cents. So that's a, a quick summary of how we use the ordinary simple from a future value point of view. Now let's look at it from a present value point of view. Let's 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 think about this now. Again, it's an ordinary ordinary simple annuity. Okay, and again, two factors in order to make it ordinary simple. There are two factors that need to be in place. First of all, the payment amount is the same. The uh, payment period and the compounding periods is the same. And payment at end of month. Okay, now let's take a look at the present value. And in this particular scenario, let's assume you won the lottery. And the lottery will pay you, and again, I'm going to use very simple numbers here, $1 every year. This is a fancy lottery for five years. Okay? So you're going to get $1 a year for five years. Again, we'll use the 10% rate of interest. So what we want to do with the present value is say, how much is that stream? worth now. So essentially that's that's what we're trying to do is we're bringing this back to this period right here. Now in order to do that we use what's called the present value formula PV and again the present value formula is based on the formula that we learned in the last unit. It's just a, a summary version of that PMT 1 minus 1 plus I to the n, oh, uh, that should be minus n to the minus n over i, and I always got to be careful that minus n. Okay, the payment is one dollar in this case. One minus one plus point one zero to the minus, and we have five payments minus five to the point one zero. So when we've crunched the numbers on this, you run the number through the calculator, it'll come to $3.79, $3.79. So essentially, you would be willing to accept, at 10% rate of interest, you would be willing to accept $3.79 now for that stream of five payments of $1. And these two would be equivalent. You could either take the five payments of $1 over the years at 10% rate, or you could take three dollars and seventy nine cents now would be exactly the same. So that's the ordinary simple annuity. Any questions you let me know.